a place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's at every con of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. And we are here with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call in, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. Uh, if you're not, uh, we'll just kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just dial us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. By the way, if you're listening to us online in another country where 800 numbers for the United States don't work, uh, we have a number for you as well. The country code is 1, because we're number 1. That's the United States, of course. 1, the area code 323, and then the phone number is 520-6211. So to call us from overseas... Any country outside the United States, call 1-323-520-6211. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number domestically here. Let's say hello to Kareem. And Kareem's listening on the uh, online stream in Southfield, Michigan. Because in Detroit, they don't have the balls to have our show on the air. Hello. You are absolutely right about that, Tom. And I, I know I'm not allowed to, to talk about the time frame in which the show used to come on, but they don't even have the balls to play it at that time anymore. Well, they changed the format of the radio station now. It's all sports now. And those are the crappiest sports shows I've ever heard. I mean, when are people going to realize that if it's not ESPN or ESPN related, you really don't carry that much authority when it comes to sports? Not to mention the fact, I mean, sports on radio, can you name a good sports show? No. That's my point. <laughs> well, Tom, I called the the original purpose I called for. I'm gonna tell you about that, and then I'm gonna ask you for permission to ask you about something else. I was uh, I was reading the newspaper online yesterday, and uh, I seen something that disturbed me so bad. I've been waiting almost, you know, 36 hours to call you. There's some bitch that works for the Detroit Tigers organization. She works in the uh, the, the camera room, and she's suing for sexual harassment because the Tigers routinely put images of beautiful women with big breasts on the jumbotron. Are you and, serious? And now she she's alleging that the Detroit Tigers, the people that work there, keep a recording of some of these women, and they look at it at various times throughout the day, but there haven't been any discovery of any of these hidden tapes that she's claiming. But yes, uh, among some other sexual harassment things, uh, improper talking. Wait a minute, is she employed by the Detroit Tigers? She's employed by the Tigers. Yeah, she's employed by the Tigers, but none of this stuff was reported before her lawsuit. Well, that's what, you know, the, the article says that she didn't, you know, follow any of the proper reporting procedures. But, but yeah, the gist of her claim is, is sexual harassment for them to constantly show pictures of beautiful women at Tigers games. Now, just a guess here, Kareem. Uh, what does she look like? Uh, no, You know there was no picture of her in the, uh, in the paper. I'll bet we'll find one. I, I would appreciate it, but, you know, I'm willing to assume that uh, that she, she she's no spring chicken. Now, did her name appear in the newspaper? Uh, yeah, let me see if I, if I can grab this article. I, I will I find, no, we'll find it. We'll find it. We'll find it. Let's try to get this woman on and her attorney, Gary. Let's. Uh, I would love to talk about that. Uh, clearly, uh, she'd like to have her own image on the uh, Jumbotron. My guess is she looks like a Jumbotron. 
Hey, hey, Tom, you know, I'm, I, I always agree with you ever since, uh, uh, you know, the women of, of Spelman University, the fat and fugly women of Spelman University, started complaining about the women hip hop videos. It, it, yeah. It, it, it seems to me that it is always the less attractive women that complain about this type of stuff. Of course they do. The beautiful women go to Tigers games hoping to make it on the Jumbotron. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, you know, the, what the Tigers have been worrying about is just trying to have a winning team, and they got Dontrell Willis now, and they got Miguel Cabrera. They're, they're going to be a hell of a team this year. That's what we're hoping. And the Yankees stink. So uh, I think it's going to be a great year for them baseball wise this year. But uh, why do they need this kind of distraction? That's just great. Now, if you're going to sue, if you're going to sue the Detroit Tigers for something, sue them because the owner also owns Little Caesars Pizza. <laughs> now that I think would be grounds right there. Yeah, because those those five out pieces are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what you pay for. Yeah, five dollar yeah. pizza. And I, I want to ask you about one more thing, uh, Tom, if I can. Yeah. All right. I want I want I want your opinion on this. Now, in two weeks, I finished my last semester of law school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I was talking to a judge, and I informed the judge that I, I, I love criminal law. And I want to open up my own practice. Now, I've, I've worked security at an insurance company. Now, it was her recommendation to me that I leave criminal law alone and take a job at the insurance company I work for doing insurance law. Now, I admit that would pay a whole hell of a lot more money than I would probably make in my first seven to eight years working uh, uh, as a criminal defense attorney. But in your opinion, does the benefit of being your own boss and having your own firm outweigh the, the, the money that you would make your first maybe even 10 years well, of working I, for somebody I'm, else? I'm going to tell you, because I always talk about how much money I make here. Uh, until uh, age 28, I made lousy money in this business. Lousy. But I decided that I was good at doing this, and I enjoyed doing it. And when I was only making $28,000 a year doing it, I was still having a great time. Exactly. So uh, if I were you and you have a real passion for doing that and also for having your own practice, then uh, if you have the passion, eventually the money will catch up with it. So I would say become the best criminal attorney in town. My God, that Jack Kevorkian's running for office now. He's got to do something else. He'll be in prison again. He'll need help. Yeah, no, and the unfortunate thing about Jack Kevorkian is most people that would vote for him are dead. Well, that's right. That's a, <laughs> he, he killed him. It's too bad he's not running for office in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but did you see that, Gary? Jack Kevorkian now out of prison. He's now running for office. What, what office is he running for, Kareem? I think he's running for he's running for either a state representative or a state senator. Yeah, Jack Kevorkian. Yeah. I love that. I want to do I, I want to do an endorsement for him. <laughs> you know, I spent a day, in fact, I spent a day right where uh, you are in Southfield, Michigan. I spent the day in a limousine with Jack Kevorkian, and uh, he took me out to Royal Oak, and he took me to the uh, art gallery where his art was displayed. <laughs> that was one of the most bizarre days of my life. I saw this uh, frame that one of the paintings was in, and I said, well, that's a very unusual color for a picture frame. Uh -huh. He said, oh, yeah, that's my own blood. Kevorkian's blood. Yeah, it was his blood. That's yeah, what he, he used is, uh, to stay in the frame. He is a character. You yes, know, he I, is. I've never met him personally, but, you know, from TV interviews and other things, he is a, he is a character. I, uh, You know what? I enjoyed spending time with him. And back then, he was a listener. He was a hardcore listener. I was going to get ready to ask you that, if he, if he listens to your show. Oh, listens. that that's how I met him, because his attorney was uh, Jeffrey Figer. Oh, yeah. I know Figer probably listens to the show. Oh, he, no doubt yeah. in my mind. Yeah. And uh, one time I had dinner with him and Jack. And that, that just to say I ever did that is amazing, but it was the, one of the more amazing nights I ever spent. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the advice, Tom. Can you uh, take me out Kobe style? I absolutely will. Here you go, Kareem. Oh, Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh. 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 That's our telephone number.
Let's say hello here to Christian on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Ah oh, man, Tom, where do I where do I start? <laughs> I've been writing a list of things I want to thank you for as I was listening to the show. Um, first, I wanted to say uh, thank you for uh, giving me my balls back, man. I'm 32 years old and. Uh, I never knew life could be so great. I wanted to thank you for that. Very good. Uh, my story is very simple. Uh, I was married for 10 years. Uh, got married at a real young age, like most guys do. And uh, one day listening to your show that uh, you had regarding carrying your uh, your woman's purse. Right. It, 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 like, hit me like a ton of breaks. I mean, I, I was in a marriage where... I used to go around and buy tampons for my wife and carry her purse at the mall. I mean, granted, it was only for, like, just quick seconds of hold my purse, but, you know, not like some of these guys that I see at the mall walking around literally carrying the purse as if it was their own. Thank God I didn't go that far. But, <laughs> um, yeah, after that, man, after I, I heard that show, my next opportunity to uh, – you know, to, to, to stand my ground, I did, and uh, that was basically the beginning of the end, Tom, because after uh, six months after that incident where she asked me to hold her purse, uh, I pretty much started taking control of everything that that just felt right to me. You know, everything I thought I, you know, that I knew shouldn't shouldn't be an issue as a man, I, I just took it over, and, and, and today... You know, four years, five years uh, divorce now, and um, it, it's it's a beautiful feeling, man. It, it's just uh, amazing, amazing. So you now feel like a real man, and did you dump that bitch? Oh, <laughs> Tom, I DTB. Not only did I dump that bitch, uh, the way it happened was um, she decided she, you know, things got really bad rapidly. She she was she, you know, she. She's a good-looking woman. She uh, she actually modeled for Lowrider Mag and actually gigs that I got her involved because I've always been in the uh, music industry and I've been a DJ or was a DJ until she made me give it up like about 10 years ago. Yeah, trust me, I, I, I went through it, man. But, yeah, she, she it, you know, after uh, everything started happening, she decided she wasn't going to come home on a weekend. Well, guess what? Well, I decided I'm going to... Throw her ass out of the house. That same weekend, I grabbed all her crap, took it to her parents' house, changed the locks, uh, and, and that was it, man. I mean, I, everybody who knows us or who knew us, because I cut ties with a lot of people that, you know, I, I they just, you know, they, I don't, I don't like negative energy in my life. But yeah, every, anybody that knows us was just really shocked because, you know, I played the part that we were a great marriage like every every marriage out there basically uh tries to put up the front that they're, they're living a great life when they're really not because everything you say is true and most men out there uh you know they're too pussy too much of, of being pussies and uh you know not not stepping up to the plate and admitting that hey something's wrong you know uh, i shouldn't feel weird you know when when uh when i want to have sex every other night or every night you know like women will they'll, they'll kill you man they'll, they'll like you say they'll they'll take the life out of you man and that that's what i felt happening and it just so happened man that you you know you you saved me i i i know i'm jumping from one thing to another i'm just uh, you know i'm a little nervous i've been wanting to call you for the past five years man to tell you but um yeah yeah i i uh <laughs> i went through hell man my 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 story goes way beyond that. I mean, not having a father uh, in you know around in the house really really hurt me, you know. And um, you know, it it just it hurt me because I didn't have anybody to kick my ass when I was uh, getting out of line. And uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of things. So you like the fact that I kick guys' asses? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, you know what? Now the way I live is is. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't live by the law that, that you, you know, by the, by the rules. I mean, I, I do in a way. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll tell you this. I, I'm engaged again, and I know, I know you're probably thinking already, like, oh boy, here we go again. But 
No, it, it it's not like this. And I'll tell you, I don't recommend for people to do what I'm doing now because uh, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that, that, that are that strong mentally. Like, in order for you to, to achieve something in this world, you have to learn from your mistakes. And that's one thing that I hear you say all the time. I've learned from my mistakes. And that's one thing that I always tell people. I learn from my mistakes. And... I'm engaged now, but see, the difference is that now it's about me. It's about what Christian wants to do. Um, obviously, when I was younger, I, I didn't think about school. You know, all I thought was about getting laid and, 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 you know, like young guys do, which is no problem. The only thing is that, you know, I ended up knocking up some girl and ended up spending like four or five years with, you know, with the mom. And it just turned out ugly. Do so you cool. have a prenuptial agreement? Uh, no, no, we didn't. Why not? And, uh, um, well, uh, you know what? I, I wasn't that uh, aware of things. In the, another thing. Very, very when did you strange. get married? What happened? When did you get married? Uh, I, it was about, well, now about 12 years ago, 14 years ago, something like that. I don't even remember. You got married thing. at 18? Yeah, yeah, I got married 18 going on 19. I was at the peak of my uh, DJing career, and uh, she basically told me it's either the music or me. And like a pussy, I chose her. Oh, boy. And you're telling yeah. me it's working out great. No, you know what, Tom? I know why you ask about the prenup. Uh, we have two kids together, and, um, you know, I'm paying hefty child support. I mean, God, Jesus, oh, my God, I'm paying some serious child support. But... When it came to the alimony, see, I, I'm actually on my way to go pick up my kids right now. I'm, I'm, I, I think I consider myself, I'm a great father. You know, I, 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 I keep in touch with them. They don't live with me, but, you know, they got cell phones. We're, we're text messaging back and forth. We, you know, we call each other. I pick them up faithfully every other weekend. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm there for them. And what I'm trying to say is that, this bitch, she, you know, she actually threatened me to, to get me for alimony. And I said, you know what? If you, if you even so think of getting me for alimony, I'll disappear. Like, you will never see me. I'll move to Afghanistan or wherever I got to go. But if you, if you want to be a bitch and be a money-hungry bitch like the majority out there, and want to get me on top of what I'm already paying you for child support, I'll disappear. You make the call. Oh, of course she didn't because she knows. She knows that, you know, ever since the kids were born, you know, I I'm the one that stepped up to the plate and literally... You so know, you're think, split up now? Oh, yeah, we're divorced. We're divorced But now. you're getting married again. Uh, you know what? I I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> like they say, I'm leasing with the option to buy, Tom, you know? Well, that means you're not getting married. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm engaged, and uh, the only thing that keeps me saying I want to marry this girl is because she is she is like the one of a kind. Man. What do you have to gain? I, if she could be one of a kind without you signing a contract. Yeah, I don't understand. I know. I know. I agree. I agree with you. And, hey, if I could keep it like this for a while, or at least until I'm done, um, you know. Yeah, but why do you my... need to get married? I want you to tell me the specific reason why Christian needs to be married. You know, Tom, there is no specific reason. Then why do it? Yeah, no, I mean, there is no reason to get married. Then why do it? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with but if you. If you agree, then you won't get married. I, you know what? Chances are I won't. <laughs> what do you mean chances are? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I probably won't. You I know mean, who's in control of that, Christian? I am in control That's of that. That's right. Huh? So, so what do you mean probably? Well, you know what? I, I, I proposed to her, and I think when I proposed to her... Why? Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know. I was... I, I, I guess it was... I, I, I don't know. I was having one of those, like, relapses of uh, of being a pussy, I guess, at the time. You know, it was very... God I, almighty. Yeah, I know. It makes me want to throw up, too. But, you know, she... Jesus really Christ. <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm not mad at myself because I'm mad at you. <laughs> Don't say that. Tom. I am mad at you. What are you doing? No, you know, no, be no, a man. No. Step up to the plate. Go tell her. You know what? <laughs> I misspoke. You do not have to get married. What are you doing? No, I know. I know. I don't. And I how big is the ring? How big is the ring? Oh, 
my God. Are you kidding me? I bought it on Craigslist off some girl who her boyfriend uh, dumped or whatever. Really? It's very yeah, romantic. Yeah. And uh, how big is it? It's like a half a carrot. It's, it's cheesy, man. I could have got something from the... Uh, from the vending machine, I roll. She she wouldn't have cared. To uh, be it sounds like true you. love to me. Well, no, you know what? Is I think that she likes the fact that I stand my ground. That I'm a man. You didn't and, stand and, your ground. You asked her to marry you. Well, no. Here's I mean, standing I mean, your ground, Christian. You know? Standing your ground is saying, you know what? This is as far as it's going. <laughs> oh God! If you knew this girl, Tom, you probably wouldn't say that. Yes, man. yes, I would. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, don't be, yeah, no, no. Yes, I, I know, I know. But um, you know, uh, uh, what I wanted also to that would be a man. That would be standing up like a man. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess. But I, what she I likes about you is that you're a pussy. No, that she I can step I, on you. I don't go through any of the grief that I used to go through. You know, like. I pretty much do what I want to do. You really? Know? I, so you I, want you want to sign a contract that says you'll give her half of everything you owe? Oh, That's no, what you want. Know. Well, then no. why did you offer to do that? Well, you know what? I, if I if you know if when I do get married, if it happens, I, I will have a prenup done. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I learned my lesson. You know, today people. Ask yeah, but you pay. she doesn't know you want a prenup done. No, she does. Yeah. Oh, oh, and so no, you I told her. And, and you also, told her that you want a prenup. Yes, yes, And yes, she yes. said, oh, yes, honey, I'll sign anything you put in front of me. No, she gave me the, uh, oh, my God, are you kidding? And and she knows. She knows I'm serious, you know? Oh, I don't believe you're serious. Why does she? Oh, no, 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 of course. And I also want a DNA test. If if I happen to be, you know, if I get to where I want to get in, in life, but, you know, I'm working really hard to achieve something. If financially... Why I'm don't able... you achieve a vasectomy? Uh, well, yeah, I could do that, too. That wouldn't bother me. You've already got children. Yeah. Why do you yeah. need more children? Well, I, I don't. I don't need Great. children. Great. Make the appointment. <laughs> Tom, you know what I want? I, I want I, I, I want a chance to raise my child the way I want to raise my child. Oh, meaning I, you want to have more children. Well, you know what? I... I, I yeah, I guess if you look at it. One that second way, ago, yeah, you were talking about having a vasectomy, and now you're telling me the truth. Well, which is yeah, that you're not having a vasectomy; you're going to be having children. No, 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 I'm not going to be having children. Well, Why I'm do you say you want to raise your child your way? What child? Well, okay, if 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 everything goes the way I plan it to, and I become financially independent, I would love to have a child so that I could But you're not going to be financially independent because you're going to get married to uh, somebody who's going to leech off you. Uh, no, it's not. No, not, not with this girl. No. Oh, I don't think no, not good. her. She's different. Well, no, I'll yes, it's all the other women, but not your girl. I know. Oh, yeah. Sure it is. It's all That's the other classic. women. By the way, um, let's go back in history there, Christian. Did you think the first girl was going to hold you up for ransom like she did? No, no, no not her, not her either. No, and amazingly, I, you've met another woman who's never going to be in it for the money, right, Christian? Well, it, that could never happen. <laughs> oh, Your Honor, I I feel like I'm going to get ten years to life for this. You should. <laughs> Being married is worse than 10 years to life. It is life. It, you know what it is. It's life without possibility of parole is what it is. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, no, it, it is. That's it why is. you asked her to marry you, because you know how horrible it is. Well, you know what? I, I think because, like I said, I learned from my mistakes. Sure, that's why you're getting married again. <laughs> no, but I think it is. And you don't think she wants the money. Um, and uh, even though you said you're paying child support up up the ass, and even though you said uh, you were going to have a vasectomy, now you want to raise your child your way, the one you haven't had yet. Well, it's different, though, because I, I didn't really get a fair shot at, the, at my first two children. Well, why were you I, talking to I, me I about a vasectomy? Well, see, I didn't... I didn't because I didn't you were full of crap, doing, that's why, doing, because right. you're not a real man, you were full of crap. No, not even. Are you kidding me? I, I, I not even, no, I... I you know, I just want a chance. I didn't when I was when I did my mistakes when I was younger. You blew it, know. buddy. You blew it. You, you, what you should be doing now is making sure the rest of your life is not a disaster. No, and I'm doing that. Having Believe more, me. getting married again, and having more children is going to dig you deeper into the hole. Yeah, 
Yes, Listen yes. carefully this time. <laughs> he, he, he. Are you it's hearing my... me? No, listen. Tom, it's going it's to dig name. you deeper into the hole. You will never come out. What do you do for a living, Christian? Uh, I'm a biomed at a hospital. What is that? Oh, well, I, you know, I fix machines, you know, like x-ray, dialysis machines. Things so you're a mechanic machine. in a hospital. Yeah, yeah. Right. That sounds very rewarding. And how much do you make for that? Uh, you know, like 35, 40 bucks an hour at the most. 40 bucks an hour. So yeah. at most, you make 80,000 a year and you're supporting how many people? Uh, just myself and, uh, and, you know, the and child how many family. children? Uh, do I have any more children? No. How many children are you supporting? Two, two children. Two children. Do you pay any alimony? Uh, no, no, I don't. So you're supporting two children plus yourself plus a girlfriend. And then you want to add in the children you haven't had yet. Uh, well, no, no, not really. I, I won't have children, and I won't get Ugh. married in, until I achieve my goal. That's that's it. That's where it ends. That That's it, you know? You don't need to ever get married. I, I understand, and I agree with you. Yeah, you agree I, with me, but you're going to do it anyway. Um... You know what? I, I could be pursuing my, my my goal for the rest of my life, so that would mean I'll never get married. If you're pursuing your goal the rest of your life, you probably picked the wrong goal. Uh, well, no, I don't. I, I, I'm giving myself a What is your goal, to years. become head mechanic at the hospital? No, no I'm actually, uh, God, I don't even want to say it, because I remember some guy calling you drilled them for it, but I'll take a shot at it. Uh, you know, I'm learning how to produce music, actually. Oh, don't even get me started. John like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A back road's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likes Show. How you doing? Can, can I hear? Uh, can I hear you? Watch. Guys. Yeah. But first of all, first of all, if you curse again, it's not going to matter what you say. It's going to be bleeped out, and you'll be hung up on. So I recommend, Mister Mouth, that you clean up your act right now because the FCC is never going to allow that language on the air. Do you understand? I understand. You will not get to say what you want to say if you curse again. Okay. Do you hear me? But now is the FCC. Do you hear me? I Do you hear you me? Yeah. So I you bet. You so you bet. Why? Well, I, I hope you did. Keep in mind. Also, we've got your home phone number, and if you curse again, there is a three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar fine from the FCC, and I'm going to make sure that your name and phone number are forwarded on so that you can pay it. No problem. Nope. Oh, no problem. Must be great to be rich. I didn't say I was rich. Yeah. Well, look forward to bankruptcy in your future, pal. Because if you curse again, you'll be paying for it. Okay. So, let me ask you a question. Are you married? By design, no. Girlfriend? By design, no. Boyfriend? Never. Okay. I'm just asking. And stuff. I don't understand the stuff that you're telling these guys that they shouldn't be able well, to... Well, just because you're not intelligent enough to understand what I'm talking about doesn't mean others don't understand. Well, oh, I'm intelligent enough. Oh, yes, I can and, tell uh, you're, you're a Mensa member, I can tell. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't understand. If you want your woman to take care of you, do your laundry, clean your dirty underwear, clean your house... And take care of everything else, but you don't want to do that for her to buy tampons or something like that. Well, I, do, I don't. I it. start with this. I don't think men should have a wife. Then it's not an issue. So what do you think we should have? I think that we should have sex with whoever we want, do whatever we want, and live alone. So you say if we just see a girl, say, okay, let's go have fun. Yeah. That's not reality. Well, that's it's reality real in my. I mean, that not, that's not your real world, Ronnie. That's my world. Oh, and you can just walk up to a girl and say, "Let's go have sex," and we you're good to go. 
I'm good to go an awful lot. And people I, who know me I, know it's true. I, that's kind of hard, very hard to believe. Well, again, Ronnie, that's because society. that's because you live in your world. No, I live in a reality world. No, no, you don't, because whatever world you live in is not my world. My world is a world where I live alone, my money is mine, I don't pay alimony or child support to anybody, and uh, because I've got money, I get the hottest, youngest chicks available. Oh, so in other words, you have to buy them. I don't give them any money. Oh. And if you are a regular uh, listener, you know why. So you just take them home, bang them, or to a hotel, bang them, and then send them on their way? That's correct. You don't feed them dinner or anything else? If I can avoid it. But nine times out of ten, you'd say you feed them dinner? Nine times out of ten, I say I don't. Oh, so the one time you did pay for it. Oh, no, I didn't pay for uh, sex. I, if I took a woman to dinner, it's because I wanted to have dinner. Oh, oh. What? And what even then, I didn't spend... Even then... Because I don't understand it. What I've cage? Never, Why would you assume I would come out of a cage? I've never heard nobody talk like that, like you have. Now, don't get me wrong. Well, I'm in L.A., and I turned your radio on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I just scanned the channel until I found one that I like to listen to. All right, so you're and not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, let, let me assume you are not a local resident here in Los Angeles. Oh, no, 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 I'm out of Florida. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's about. So you're new to this. Yeah, like I said, I'm new to your show. And like I said, I've never heard nobody talk like this. And that's because you live in I'm Florida. Calling. Well, that's because you live in Florida. Yeah, but I live in Florida and I live in Michigan, too. Well, um, well, believe me, we've had a caller from Michigan today, Southfield yeah, calling. I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, and he's Which a big and he's a big fan. But I didn't know that you went all the way up to there. You know uh, well, saying? anybody with a computer could hear this show anywhere in the world. Well, I didn't know about your show. See, this is well, all now you know. The show. Well, the show. again, just because it's new to you doesn't mean it's new. Doesn't mean that uh, there aren't millions of people who already do know about it. But I don't understand your way of thinking. I mean, you're going to be alone the rest of your life. Uh, I, if I do it right. I'm going to be alone the rest of my life if I do it right. And what's, who's going to carry on your name? Uh, well, I've got uh, a brother, and he's got a child, and uh, that uh, name will be carrying on. So you don't want no kids? I don't want no, no, I don't want no kids, no. And how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 51, Ronnie. Okay, you're two years older than me. There you go. And stuff. I just and I don't have just, to pay some bitch half of my uh, paycheck. And see, I don't either. I don't know what you do. I mean, I, I'll tell you just like it is. I've if you if 20, you 28 years, I've raised seven kids. My baby's 24 and just finishing college. Right. Well, you are supporting another person. I still yeah, supported my family. I stepped up to the plate being well, a man. Well, I see. supported my family. Well, because you have a family, you have to step up to the plate. But if you don't have a family, there's no plate to step up to. And uh, you'll never have one. You know what Not plate I you? step up to? I step up to the plate in Tuscany at an expensive restaurant. Last year I had dinner. Just me. $2,400 for dinner. And it was just me. I stepped up to the plate. And that tells me. Something you, you can you never do. You need, and you're right, and I wouldn't pay $2,400 for a dinner. You didn't taste all. what I tasted. I know, but that's And you couldn't, you, you need, couldn't you afford $2,400. You couldn't $2, afford twenty. No, I don't. You couldn't I afford $24 for dinner. You couldn't do it. And that's because you have obligations. No, all my kids are grown. Now it's just me and Mama. All, everything I own is what, paid for. You and who? Me and Mama. Oh, you and Mama. Yeah, my wife. Is she a big Mama? No. Hmm. And uh, you're paying all her expenses? No. Everything I have is paid for. So you don't pay for, like, electricity? It's free? You have free water? Oh, no, no, no. Free no, property taxes? No, I pay them. Those are just those are common bills. You got them, mm -hmm. right? And your wife doesn't eat any groceries, I take it? Well, sure she does. Oh, who's paying for those? Well, both of us are because we both work. I see. See, she, 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 she works, too. Ooh, that's great. Does she make as much money as you do? No, not as much as I am. So you pay close. more? Well, no. I She makes pretty close to what I make. Mm. So you each pay half? Well, the money goes in one pot and then it's pulled out. Well, if you make more than she does, you pay more? Well, maybe so. 
Mm -hmm. if you try to figure it out on the bills, but no, not really. Well, I just did. I don't think so. Right. Because if you just put it in one pot and you pull it out, it don't matter. Well, guess what? If I don't have to put it in a pot with somebody else, I have more than if I had to put it in a pot with somebody else. Well, that's true there. But right. look at you. You go home at night. You're all alone. You oh, have no. nobody to lay with. First of all, I have somebody else. to lay with when I want them. And only when I want them. So I guess that's when they're at your house. They don't eat nothing, drink nothing, or anything else. Hopefully right? not. But nine times out of ten, they do. No, nine. T I, again, I, I don't know how many times I have to repeat the same thing. Nine times out of ten, they don't. Oh, so you just walk in, bang them, and send them down the road. If I can, yes. Uh, okay. Here's so here's one of my techniques. I'm going to tell you. I say, what time are you having dinner tonight? She'll say 7.30. And I'd say, okay, you ought to be done about 9. What, you come over about 9.30. So you don't whine and dine them or anything? Don't have to. Ah, so you're that good. That has nothing to do with being good. Even if I'm lousy and bad, it doesn't matter, because by the time they find that out, I kick them out and they move on to the next victim. Oh, so you're that good looking then, is what you tell them. No, I'm just rich and famous. Rich and famous. So yep. That's all you have to be. Oh, Okay. Well, like I said, I think that you you could use a little bit of help, especially for paying twenty four hundred dollars. I don't need any help, yourself. but the only help I need is in remembering all those good times that you'll never have. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. When you go to a bar or something or a dance club and people leave their beers on the side and a girl asks you to buy her a beer, just grab that beer and take it to her. Don't let her see you though. And then if she asks you, hey, this beer's half drank, I'll be like, well, I took a sip. I'm buying it for you. Don't be so stingy. And she'll drink it anyway. And there's a free beer, baby. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom That is our telephone number. Wide open telephones here. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Long time listener, second time caller. Doing okay, Scott. Listen, I wanted to know what you think about Kobe Bryant and these 15 technical fouls that he's earned up this season. And um, Do you think he deserves the MVP this season uh, as a result of that? Well, uh, you... <laughs> That's two separate questions. You don't deserve the MVP as a result of technical fouls, but you cannot argue with the uh, the Lakers' record this year. Look, I believe that uh, Kobe Bryant is a petulant little boy, and uh, you know his personality is very hard to figure out. Uh, but as a basketball player, you can't deny he's the best player there is, and the Lakers are better. And part of the reason they're better, I gotta say, is because he was a petulant little boy and demanded that uh, Jerry Buss improve the team, which he and Mitch Kupchak then did. Yeah, but you know, I, I kind of disagree with that because I think they would have gone that route and gotten Pau Gasol or him some kind of help, anyways. Um, I, I think that the front office, any of these front offices, um, any of these teams, know where the weak spots are. Know. Which pieces of the puzzle are missing? Really? And, what? What have the Clippers done? Who? You said any of these teams? They know. Well, what about the Clippers? Do they know the weak spots? Oh yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> have they fixed them? No, but it's not. It's not always in the cards. Sometimes. Well, understand. Uh, the Lakers were facing a problem with the luxury tax, oh. and it's my belief that they did not want to uh, get into luxury tax territory. And I believe that if uh, Kobe uh, wasn't acting like he wanted to leave, uh, it probably uh, would have behooved them to just wait and see if these players developed. Well, I guess my point uh, of this question, the thing I was getting at is, don't you think on some level this should be weighed into whether or not he deserves the MVP? I mean, if he's going to We all know that ball, this has nothing to do with the MVP. Um, Kobe has been the best player in the league for years, but he's never been the MVP. And uh, the reason he would be the MVP this year is because he's not only played well, but he's played as part of a team. And uh, you got to give the guy credit for that. No matter what else you say about him, you got to give him credit for that. The Tom Likas Show.